So I'd like to thank you all once again for joining us for our primary sources and teaching online webinar series. Again, brought to you by the TPS Western Region in partnership with the TPS Teachers Network. And now back to you, Sarah, for part two of tur turkeys, chili peppers, and corn analyzing a historic codex. Okay, great. So, um, oh, this is our little commercial piece. Okay, so the rest of the story. Um, give you a little bit more information. We're going to look at some other resources and, and hopefully explore. This is another page that's part of that eight, eight page document. So we looked at three pages and I'll tell you why I picked those three pages versus some of these others. But again, you can see the symbol of the, the flag or the, the butcher knife um, with the, the, the grid or the screen that would indicate fabric. And these were designs that were made. So this symbol represented um, 20. So you can do the math um, pretty quickly. One, two, three, four, eight, 16. 24. Anyway, the, a lot, a lot of fabric was created. This page isn't quite, um, doesn't quite match up with some of the others, which, which makes it a little questionable. Um, we have all those flags, but there's nothing on the top of the flags. But above that is um, some people carrying shields and, and with spears. So that did represent the warriors that they needed um, to complete this, this accounting. Along the right-hand side, um, I believe, uh, I believe that's a, a granary um, was, was one idea. And then the, the numbers along the side represented how many of those. Again, more fabric. This one, oh, this one is the granary in the upper right-hand corner. Um, corn, again, we have red corn, and so this is the storage of corn. And those round circles, again, how many, how many collections of the granary? Another symbol um, of weavings that were created. Um, these are rather elaborate. It looks pretty much like Mayan. Um, designs uh, or native peoples of, of Mexico designs. And then this is the most famous page. Now, this page is rather confusing. Um, the reason this is, this is the most famous is because of that mother and child in the center. Now, to be totally honest, I think they look pretty scary. Um, I, um, some of the drawings of the faces don't look as scary um, on, the, on the people down at the bottom. Um, it's very colorful and it's very um, depicting of, of a Madonna. So this is famous because of this Madonna. It's supposedly the first depiction of a Madonna of the Christian religion coming to Mexico. The story as we understand it is that um, the people of Huedo Cinco were charged with creating ba this banner to be carried in a procession. And what they made it out of were feathers. So above the Madonna, do you see the green feathers? And so they had to buy these feathers and it cost them money. So these gold coins cost them money. They had um, slaves that were sold. There, and they have a depiction of how, I mean, they have documentation of how many slaves. Um, off to the, to the left side, the, the footprint, um, it's how many sandals they had to have for the, this, this whole project. Um, the jar at the top was symbolized amber. Below, and then the spears, they kind of look like birthday candles, but they said it's spears. Um, below that was loincloths. So this was documentation of what they had been charged um, and what went into creating this um, banner that was, was created. So there, there are documentations with specialists that you can actually listen to um, who talk about this, and but mostly, about this page because this is the one that, that they feel is most important. Um, I see a comment about collaborating with the art teacher and, and building or creating your own. So many ideas. I mean, when you think about 
math usually doesn't come up too often in our primary sources, um, but the, the math part, the, the art part, the social studies, the conflict and resolution, there's a lot of ways that you can go with this. Um, I was a little uncomfortable with the lesson plan um, with the, the slaves because the selling of slaves, I was like, okay, for younger kids, I, I just felt like, let's just do the math and focus on that for the lesson plan. But anybody can, can go on in any different tangent that they would, they would like. So we're going to take a look at the lesson plan and I'll go live in just a minute, but let me get you through um, some of these, these slides here before we go live. Um, this is the lesson plan and if you're familiar with the, the Library of Congress teacher page lesson plans, you go to loc.gov slash teachers, then classroom materials, then lesson plans. When you get to the lesson plan page, there's all kinds of topics. So world history is where this one is. And then it's called Wado Cinco Codex with the X and the C. Um, all the lesson plans have the overview, then the preparation, the procedure, and the evaluation. And, and as usual, you don't have to use it exactly as is, but it gives you a frame of reference and something to refer to if you'd like to do that. Um, or you just modify it and make your own. There's a teacher page blog um, about this, this lesson um, with some pictures. Um, I believe that Everett Larson, who was the head of the Hispanic division, um, is actually holding the originals. So you can see the size of them. They're pretty dramatic as far as the coloring, which is amazing that these were created in 1531 and that those colors are still as vivid as they are. They are part of the Harkness collection. The, the thing that I just recently discovered um, is that there's no bibliographic record for these items. So if you go to the library's webpage and you do a search, um, it will connect you to um, the blog page, the lesson plan, and um, some online um, webinars, but there's no actual item that shows all eight pages. And most of the exhibition items show usually just that page with the Madonna. So it may be a little bit difficult. But just before we came online today, um, I mentioned how good it was, I was that I couldn't actually find a, a bibliographic record for it. And we went to the World Digital Library and all eight pages are there. So we'll take a look at that. Um, so um, well, one of the comments in the, in the blog um, says, Dr. Under, Dr. Larson underscored that this document is important because it records the first time an indigenous American group, Central American, um, used a Western system of law to address an injustice. They submitted this and other documents as a record of taxes paid. And then of course, I already told you that they won. Um, there are some other, if you do a search in maps, which some of you know, maps are some of my favorites, um, you can do a search for codex and you come up with some other things. Now there's a whole webinar about this one. Um, this is the kettle, I'm not going to even try to pronounce it because I'll ruin it. Um, but another codex and it has some of the same symbols in it. So kind of fun for kids who might be um, really intrigued to, to learn about some other ways that these symbols were used. And this was an area where they planted crops and they actually had a map of what they planted and where it was and, and actually had evidence that they had planted fruit trees and had done grafting of those fruit trees. So this one is, is quite fascinating that you might want to take a look at. And then there's webinars. Um, again, when I do these, um, lessons, you know, I, I created the lesson plan so long ago, but when I look at what's online, it's like, oh my gosh, I didn't know this. Um, so I did know about the web webinar series that, that John Hessler did about the Mesoamerican manuscripts, and one of those is on the Wado Cinco Codex, which is there at the top, but there's one that Poet Laureate Jean-Philippe Herrera did on the Wado Cinco Codex. So the por Poet Laureate, um, was was looking at um, putting together resources for La Casa de Coors, um, and he was looking at this codex as how he could use it. So um, these webinars are sometimes a little hard to find, 
my experience has been when I'm looking for a webinar, I go to YouTube and I type in Library of Congress and my keyword. And so by typing in Library of Congress and Codex into the YouTube search, these items all came up, um, which are the resources that I think might be of interest to you. The library has been doing exhibitions for years, and this is one of their exhibition top treasures. Again, it only shows these two pages, um, which I find interesting. If you actually click on that, and, and we'll go there, it does give you the numbering system information. So that could be a place that you can have a link for students to go and actually see what they could find and maybe discover that numbering system without you giving it to them. Jay Kislak um, collection at the Library of Congress was part of the, ex or his, his collection is part of the Exploring of the Early Americas. And one of the sections of that was um, using this item. This item is part of the, the um, Hartness collection, so it wasn't part of Jay Kislex, but they merged it in with the exhibition. So this tells a little bit about the story, and then um, you might notice at the top there, it says one of two, and so it goes to, to two pages, and it looks like the other pages are here as well, um, which, but you, if you look for the bib record, it's not, and then, then the numbering system is there too, so. Okay, so um, if you wanna jot down my email um, and if you have questions that you wanna know more about, I'm happy to answer those. For now, what I'm gonna do is, is exit out of the slideshow and um, we're gonna go online and so I can show you some of these things. Oops. So the Library of Congress homepage, here we are. I'm gonna make this so that I can get to all of my screen. Okay, so if we search everything, um, if you can remember how to spell Wado Cinco Codex, you could put that in there, um, or you can just do Codex, um, which might be easier for you to remember. Um, so if we just do Codex, there are several codexes that come up, and we can scroll down, and here is the Wado Cinco Codex webinar. As we scroll on down, that's the other one that I was telling you about, and then we get to the lesson plan. So I'm going to go to the lesson plan and show you how that's laid out. I think most of you are probably familiar, but here is the overview. Um, it gives you some background of grade levels, topics, eras. Um, the preparation, the um, analysis tool is here. The codex is here with the eight sheets if you wanted to print out the whole entire item. But here are the, the math worksheets the um, answer key, and then those three tributes, if that's all you wanted to print. So tribute one, two, and three are the pages that we analyzed as a group. And then here is an overview document, um, which is the one and gives you the spelling or the pronunciation, Weho Cinco, um, and some of the background. So this was something when we did this as a lesson plan with students, Students um, actually gave them this document after the fact um, so that they had the background information. And then um, there are, are links to, to some other resources. So let me take you um, to the, I want to see what happens if we do this. So this is part of the exhibition. Um, and I'll scroll up so that you can see we're in American Treasures. Um, and when we click on, on these items, the Wado Cinco Codex comes up there. But when you, when you click to that, it comes, it jumps down to this part. So here are these, the separate pages. Um, and this is a link through the numbering system. So if we click through that, it has the flag and it says in the corner here, I don't know if you noticed that 20 equals 20. And then we click to the next one. So this is 20 turkey. The next one is that the bundle equals 40, or 400, I'm sorry. It doesn't actually show the base 20 system, 20 times 20. And here's 20 bushels of corn. And the, the bag is 8,000, and that this was 8,000 chili peppers. A load of adobe bricks, a load of lime, and a load of lumber. 
So that gives you a, a reference that you could have if you wanted kids to actually discover that as they, they went on. And the second page up here for this one is, um, is just the map. So um, it doesn't show all the pages unless you click down here. And we can go through them all here. So there's several ways to get to them, and you could you could crop those and and grab them and, and make copies if you wanted to. Um, so the the lesson plans um, are pretty structured, but again, you don't have to follow that. If we wanted to go back to um, to the search for here, we can find the blog where I showed you that. But the World Digital Library is a resource that hopefully you're familiar with, wdl.org. And um, when you decide to search, um, I'm just going to put codex in. And we're going to get a lot of different codexes that are part of this collection. Um, so again, if codex is something that um, is a term that you want to explore further with your students, you could find all different kinds of code codices here. But here's our Wado Cinco Codex. So if we click on this, um, this goes to the Library of Congress page, and if we go to view the item, it doesn't really show us too much. Um, it does go through these. So it doesn't show the whole set of eight. But what we did find um, was another mention of it. Let me go back. This is part of the Harkness collection. So this is the, the Wayne Osinko Codex that the Library of Congress posted on the World Digital Library. But there's another one that um, has more information about Wayne Osinko, another codex, a Chevero codex. Which I knew nothing about. Can you see these symbols that are in here? Very similar to what we were looking at and it's part of, of a large document that we could go page by page through um, but if we look at, at this actual page um, and view that, oops, they don't tell me what page it's on. So we'll just look at it from here. But again you can see the bumble, bundles of sticks, you see the, the picture frame, um, and so lots of interesting details from, from this item, and it gives us more background about the place and what was happening. Um, it talks about the shapes multiplies um, by 10, a half moon represents 15. So this is something I'm gonna need to explore more and investigate. Um, this says the flag or, or um, Pantley represents 20 and a bundle of hair signifies 400. So I refer to that as sticks. This refers to it as, as, as hair. It's fascinating how many different um, resources we can find and continue to find something new. If we um, type in Wado Cinco, there were several other things that came up. And again, multiple spellings. So here's these two. I think if I did the J, no, I'm still getting the same thing. So we found a few other things when we were looking before, um, but always interesting to, to find what's out there and what more details. We're constantly learning something new. So questions about any of these resources. Um, some of these other codexes might have some other symbols that would be um, similar. But again, you can see that uh, the word codex, um, this one's from Bratislava, they're from all over the world. So kind of, kind of interesting to look at, at what else is out there. Um, the World Digital Library is available free. It's um, part of the UNESCO International Collection 
the library worked with the initial seven or eight uh, UNESCO libraries to launch the World Digital Library. I think it was probably 10 or 11 years ago when it launched. And I think now the Library of Congress has kind of backed out and UNESCO is, is running it. Part of that whole process of the World Digital Library was to offer countries, especially countries where there are limited um, funding to help them digitize their resources and put them online. In some cases, they actually, you know, built a building with to house the digitized digitization equipment um, with with stable electricity. Um, and in countries where things are, are somewhat unstable to digitize these would preserve them. Another fascinating thing about the World Digital Library is that everything on the site, all of these descriptions um, are translated into seven different languages. So the language options um, are listed here. Um, some of the things are originally um, created in different languages. So those are the languages that you can um, find in the collections. But when you're going to, to search things, you can actually um, change it into um, other languages. And it, in many cases, it, can, it will even read it to you in those foreign languages, which is fascinating. Um, the, the many institutions that had extensive collections, like the Library of Congress has extensive international collections. They wanted to, to share um, what they had, but many libraries clamored to come um, on and be part of this whole process early on, and, and I think it's continued to grow. So it's fascinating. WDL.org, it's, it's free to anyone. Um, some, Mary said the computer pronunciation of Wado Cinco when you listen to the World Digital Library description is hilarious. <laughs> we'll have to, have to check that one out. Um, so yeah, if you haven't been to, the, to WDL, take a look at it. It's, it's pretty incredible. Um, you can often, you can find maps where all the other libraries are. Um, there's amazing galleries and lists of items. So there's lots of different ways that you can search. And again, this one is, is in English. So here are different options. So browse around there, uh, a nice rabbit hole to, to jump down and, and be stuck for quite some time. So other questions? So hopefully this is um, not a repeat and that if you if you were familiar with the lesson plan, you got something new. If you weren't familiar with the lesson plan, um, you might want to take a look and, and dig a little deeper and see how your kids might react to it. Yeah, thanks. That, um, sorry, that, uh, that World Digital Library is a, is a resource we often overlook a little bit and it is amazing. I especially like up at the top there, you see with the timelines and interactive maps and the themes are really um, quite powerful, um, especially since there's multiple languages in here, it's, they've um, curated them kind of nicely for you to be able to, to browse around in meaningful ways. Um, they did a really nice job with this, yeah. Yeah, I'm just clicking around and I'm not coming up with much good, exciting stuff here, but... Um. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing stuff. And, it, and they're constantly adding new to it, so. Yeah, their list of institutions is, is lengthy. Um, so it's a kind of a nice one-stop shop. There's, since we all started doing this, the, the amount of resources that are available are, are so much more vast, which makes it an even larger problem. But it's kind of nice to have a clearinghouse here for a lot of top quality. I always, when I show this off to people, I always say the Library of Congress is really about depth of information they can get up. Um, and the World Digital Library is really about um, the best of the best from different institutions around the world. So I think that's probably still the case, at least in my opinion. It's pretty exciting. Yeah. Okay. Well, great. Well, I'm looking to see if there's any other questions that might have come up. Um, so much on genealogy research. I, the Library of Congress has a genealogy division. Um, when I was at the library 
um, I kind of described it as a specialty shop with all these special divisions. And, and there is a geology division. I don't know how much of their resources are available online, but you could contact them if you go to the Library of Congress and ask a librarian. Let me see, we're here at researchers. And then we have, um, all right, I know it's here. Local history and, and genealogy. So their division is available with resources. I'm not sure how much is online, but you could actually contact them um, with Ask a Librarian if you had specific questions. The Library of Congress, I don't believe has, uh, has the language feature like the World Digital Library. The focus of the World Digital Library was to make these available across many languages. So everything will be translated um, into French, Russian, Spanish, English, German, um, Arabic, and I could be wrong. But I think, I think, and there's one other, um, I don't want to tell you the wrong thing, but the Library of Congress doesn't, but the World Digital Library does have the language features, as far as I know. Anybody else chime in with knowledge of other languages on the library's website. The library does have divisions that focus on different languages. So there's the Hispanic division, there's the African and Middle Eastern division, there's the European division. So there are, are divisions, that whole scenario of like the little specialty shops does focus on different, different languages in different regions of, of the world. And their collections, the Library of Congress collections have items in I think it's 470 languages. But the ability for the website to be read to you or, or to translate into other languages, I don't believe is there. It's very helpful. And I know that the library is always uh, very interested in accessibility. And so if, if there's any sort of issue of, 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 of language barriers, I reach out to that ask, ask a librarian service and I'm sure they have all sorts of resources to help. So. Great. Well, thanks for joining us. And if you have any questions, um, hopefully you have my email and you can let me know or you can go through um, the uh, teachers network or through Keith and Kyle and get to me if, if you can't find my email. So yeah, we're, we're all always here to help. Um, yeah, reach out to the TPS Western region or, or Sherry if, if, if you need or have questions. We're always here to help teachers. And um, if we don't know the answer, we will try to find somebody who does. So that's always a good thing to know. And Sherry, if you have a link to that final slide, and I have that pop back, but um, that'd be helpful for that final oh, link so people great. have it. Yeah. And if you if you have continue to have questions, just add those in the chat and we will hop back. But I just wanted to kind of wrap this up um, and send, say a couple of thanks. So first of all, thanks Sherry for for sharing your experiences with these amazing resources. Um, it's always nice to to see um, the work you did at the library and, and these lesson plans and these stories that you've gathered um, through all your experiences. And I also want to thank. Uh, Kyle and Crystal who have been helping in the chat room and keeping an eye on that. And of course, uh, thanks to the Library of Congress for making these webinars possible through the TPS program. Again, as a reminder, for those of you who would like a professional development certificate for your participation, the link is up there. It's the bit.ly slash PS teaching online. Just go there. There's a brief reflection and then just give us some information about how to send it out. Um, and we'll get this out to you quickly. I also want to mention if any of you were here last night and had trouble selecting the correct um, name for the session last night in the certificate, we apologize. There was just a little um, updating of the, the list um, issue, but we've got that corrected now. Um, if you have any questions, just reach out to us here at uh, TPS Colorado MSU Denver and we can get anything updated for you that you might need to. Um, also recordings of tonight, tonight's presentation to all the presentations are available on the TPS Teachers Network. Um, Kyle should be throwing up the link to that so you can access those. I think we're up to, I think I counted 26 earlier today, uh, little sessions you can watch. 
and get those PD certificates for for the ones we've done in the past. Um, and to remind you that we have, um, we're going to be doing one again tomorrow and the next week for the series, and we'll be wrapping that up next week. Um, what else do I got here? Yeah, the video's available, and uh, that is it. So unless there's any other questions, I think that's all we have for tonight. So I'd like to thank everyone um, for attending, and have a pleasant evening.